Welcome to the car guys. This week we're at Bill Shepard Mustang. We're here to test drive the amazing 800 brake horsepower Shelby Super Snake. 800. And we're test driving the Shelby Super Snake. Super Snake! Shit! <laughs> so Shelby Super Snake, a standard run-of-the-mill average, <laughs> if there could be such thing, Ford Mustang GT, taken by our friends here at Bill Shepard and given the Shelby treatment. I love this car in this colour. It's really properly stealth. I mean, you could see it's something a bit special, but it doesn't look massively overt. It's only when you look at it and you see that the whole bonnet is carbon fibre, the carbon fibre wing, the deep dish rear wheels, and then you start to notice all the badges. I mean, if anything, there's maybe too many badges on this. Yeah, I think I'd probably take that massive Shelby Super Snake off the side and replace it with a Ford badge. Maybe a black, a black carbon fibre Ford, Ford badge. <laughs> that would be awesome. Oh, <gasps> how good would that be? That's what I would do. That's a big scoop on the front of that though, isn't it? Look how deep that is on the front of that car. Lovely carbon fibre splitter. That's guaranteed to Mm, connect with any curb because you're never going to know how long the car is. It'll soon have that lovely, that <laughs> tasteful, jagged sawtooth effect. I've driven a few Mustangs and um, the bonnet is quite intimidating because they are quite a big car. See, this would be my first Mustang driven ever. Really? Yeah, of any type. Old, new. You've got proper brakes. Well, clearly, look at those brakes. They're enormous. Six pot fronts, four pot rears with calipers with venting. When you see brakes that big, it means enormous power and enormous weight. <laughs> yes. I am liking these, these deep dish oh, yeah. wheels, these rear, rears in particular, lovely, which are a lot they? deeper. So this thing's had full suspension upgrades to super stake specs, but we've also got a lot of, you know, anti-roll bars, rear caster has been adjusted, the toe's been adjusted, Whipple supercharger, which is what gives it that immense power. Yeah. Drive shaft's been replaced. Well, I should hope so, it's got 800, let's say it one more time, 800 brake horsepower. I think technically 808 as well. Is it? Mm. So over 800. 808 state. Exactly. Yeah, nice. The only run that bites. <laughs> Because it's officially endorsed by Shelby, this has got the special Shelby VIN plate and the Shelby World Register so number. It's a real, actual, proper, full-blown yeah. Shelby. This car is all about making a statement and and really looking good. And and what I really like about it is it looks kind of like the car that Mad Max drove in the original oh, film. Oh yeah, amazing! Last of the V8s. Yeah. The more we walk around it, the more I look at it. I am getting a bit sick of the Shelby badging though. <laughs> If I were specking one of these new, I'd debadge the whole bloody thing. Okay, we're just about to open the bonnet. This is the first time. Oh my God. Are you kidding me with that? How, how big do you like your supercharger? Oh my God. That is incredible. Look at the size of that thing. This is a standard five litre GT. Still five litre, but you can see a lot less plumbing. No supercharger. So obviously, most of the stuff on the Shelby's been picked out in carbon. The grille's completely different. It's much more aggressive. And the bonnet, massively different as well. There's no big scoop on it. it just tails away. And this is the interior of the standard Mustang 5 litre GT. So you can see gear stick's different. It doesn't have the stack up here with the extra dials. Got a different plaque there. But other than that, pretty much identical. You snuck in there? Yeah, it's a bit, the roof's a bit low for my, yeah, I'm a bit, I've got a longer body than I needed to have, clearly. Driving the Super Snake. This feels like the start of Mad Max. Exactly that. Yeah. Beyond the Thunderdome. That is, that's the experience. It does feel quite big, very tall at the front. So I see what you mean about, about how large they feel. Yeah, feels like a big car. Yeah. Is it, uh, how's the gearbox, is it tight? It is, it's very, yeah, it's very good. It's got a good positive feel to it. It's exactly where you want it to be. 
here, there's no doubting that you're driving something special. I think that's the thing, first of all, that you notice. I mean, you can sense the power, you can feel, you can feel the weight, but it does feel special. I'm not sure you'd ever get tired of that noise. I just don't, <laughs> I don't think you would. You wouldn't, would you? No. It's the soundtrack of America. Yeah. And I think you know, right-hand drive means you don't have to have that adjustment or slight inconvenience that the Mustangs over here have traditionally had. It's actually a lot quieter in here than I was expecting it to be. Really? I thought it would be a bit, you know, radio superfluous because it's going to make, it's going to be too growly, but actually it's fairly civilised in here. And it would be nice if it wasn't so stock, you know, if it was just a couple, if interior-wise it was a little bit more special. You've got to bear in mind this is... This is not a super expensive car. I mean, the 812 super fast um, that we're getting in January, that's going to be as near as makes no difference, 400,000 quid. And this is a quarter of that. A quarter of that. With the same power. Yeah. So this is like proper yeah. American racing heritage. Yes. You do not get more famous than Carroll Shelby. Not when it comes to muscle cars, you don't. No. There's him, and then there's Chuck Yeager. When, <laughs> when it comes to American icons, that's, that's it. it. That's Literally it. nobody else. No one else. There's no one else. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, it shakes as well. It moves the car. I thought you rev it. I actually thought it moved more though. It's actually. Yeah, I thought there'd be more. What side to side? Yeah. yeah. Oscillations. Oscillations. Yeah. I, so say. I, thought, I thought there'd Check be. Check you out. Where they toilet paper? Clearly. So that, yeah, there is. There's there is. A, there is. Yeah. I thought my vision would be blurred. At that point. <laughs> How much fuel have we got left? <laughs> Hang on a minute. Half, quarter, reserve tank empty. Been on this side of a Mustang. <laughs> this is literally what you are all about. I mean, more so this than is me. me. This, this is, is this couldn't be more me. Yeah. I'm a terrible whore when it comes to muscle cars. Oh, blimey, those brakes are good, aren't they? Well, yeah. I thought it was just me. No, no. No, they are. They are no, they really are. The throttle's a bit. It's like the 458. Yeah. It's a bit sensitive at the very top. worrying about if you've ever got a am I going to get into that gap am I going to be able to pass that this is not one of those cars but yeah tickling along at Her Majesty's speed limit mm. and the tyre noise doesn't isn't that bad either considering how big and fat and wide these things are and yeah visibility is excellent you can see everything you need to I wanted it to be a little bit more terrifying so a lot more civilized than we we're expecting yeah, totally. It's um, it's a bit of a pussycat, really. It pulls hard. I'm not sure it's 800. Doesn't feel it, does Doesn't it? Doesn't feel 800. That feels more like 600, six, to be honest. But it is a big old heavy car, so maybe it is. Very, very easy to drive, but yeah, I agree. Didn't feel bonkers fast. So we just left Bill Shepard Mustang after driving the Super Snake, and uh, I think we'll... I'd like to do kind of plus and minuses. So things that, that I particularly like about it, the noise is absolutely incredible. That it just it's that classic V8 wall ball, which is which is amazing and it's really loud as well. People definitely stop and stare. I love the looks of it. Um, that carbon fiber bonnet, very subtle in the grey. Um, those deep dish black satin rear wheels as well. Loving those. Um, Super polished supercharger under the bonnet. That's incredible, <laughs> isn't it? Just looks incredible. Uh, things I don't like about it: too much badging. You only need one Shelby badge, for God's sake. Get over yourself. 
How many Shelby Banshees are on that thing? I, th I think we can look back on the footage and I, but I think We should count them. I think it's 18. We're going to count them. Coming up, we're going to insert a counting of the badges. It doesn't feel like 800 horsepower. I'm sure it is, because they say it is, right? But it just doesn't feel like it. But it is a big, heavy car. I mean, that thing must weigh a good couple of tons, I would guess. Um, other things I don't like about it are it's a bit low rent inside because it is, you know, essentially a 30 grand car, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It just, you know, it's just not not the kind of quality that you would expect for that kind of money. I like the looks and the road presence. I think it just looks mean as hell. It's a proper Mad Max car, so I love that. I love the noise. I love the burble. I like the fact that the burble is best when you're just cruising you don't have to sort of like do lunatic speeds yeah, in order yeah, yeah. to access totally. the sound like you do with a Ferrari where you got to rev the nuts off it. Um, I did like the colour, I like the, the additional carbon fibre that they've added to it. Love that engine, love that supercharger yeah, and I, I love the fact that there's only 10 right hand drive cars and I think for me things I didn't like I agree I think the the interior is low rent, but then that's why the car, for its performance, is so cheap. If you can call a hundred grand cheap, yeah. which for the purposes of this test, we will. But uh, but obviously that is a little bit ludicrous. It wasn't as raw as I expected. It was very civilized, but then rawness would have given it a little bit more character, I think. And uh, and and I just do not believe it was. It just wasn't quite as fast as I thought. I thought it was going to blow my mind. But actually I mean, don't get me wrong. It is very, very fast. It is a fast car. Are we spoiled, do you think? I, that we are slightly spoiled. It didn't feel massively quick, but when you look down at what speed you were doing, it was certainly quite a quick, it's definitely a quick car. But yeah, it didn't have the, I, I was expecting a lot more supercharger wine and a bit more theater to the acceleration than there actually was. You wouldn't think twice about jumping in it and going to Tesco's for a pint of milk. But I, I, which is a problem for the Super Snake because I, I think the, the normal Mustang GT should be quite refined and yep. it is. But if you're going to buy the Super Snake, the Shelby Super Snake, which should be to all intents and purposes a full on race car for the road, it might be a little bit too. A bit too tame? A bit too tame, a bit too civilized for, too for that name. I want it to be a little bit more bruh, rip your head off sort of feel. Thanks for watching the video guys. Please subscribe, leave comments, let us know what else you'd like us to film and don't forget a notification bell. See you in the next video. Yeah, me also, too. Also as well, we've totally forgot to do what I thought to do this morning, which was to incorporate lines from Mustang Sally in the road test. I mean, you were going to be driving and as we came up to a roundabout, I was going to go, you better slow this Mustang down. <laughs> oh my God, that would have been amazing. No, it's no good now, is it? It's too bloody late. Maybe I could cut it in. And I was going to go, today we're going to test the Mustang. <laughs> Didn't do that either.